morning and welcome again to Word for the Week, our online study series here at Cornerstone Faith Community Church. Uh, my name is Pastor Jeremy Heitkem. I'm so glad to be with you this morning as we uh, listen once again to uh, some words from J. Payleitner uh, in his book, The Prayer of Agar. In fact, um, today, uh, before we even take a look at uh, what J. Payleitner had to say in chapter 4, uh, I want to share with you the words from uh, another part of scripture from Joshua chapter 24. In Joshua chapter 24, Joshua's uh, reiterating uh, to the people, um, all the assembled tribes of Israel. He, he summons the elders, the leaders, the judges, the officials, uh, and he says something to the people. He speaks to them on behalf of God. And what's interesting is these words are not so much prophetic, although they indeed are, uh, as they are uh, particularly appropriate to the time of the people that he was speaking to. So Joshua begins in chapter two, in, or in chapter 24 at verse two, and he says, Joshua said to all the people, this is what the Lord, the God of Israel says, long ago, your ancestors, including Terah, the father of Abraham and Nahor, lived beyond the Euphrates River and worshiped other gods. But I took your father Abraham from the land beyond the Euphrates and led him throughout Canaan and gave him many descendants. I gave him Isaac, and to Isaac I gave Jacob and Esau. I assigned the hill country of Seir to Esau, but Jacob and his family went down to Egypt. And so then uh, Joshua goes on and on, re reiterating what God has done for Moses and for Aaron and bringing the people across the Jordan River and uh, coming to Jericho and, and breaking down the walls of Jericho and taking the land of Canaan for themselves. Um, and then we get to verse uh, 14. Joshua says this now, Fear the Lord and serve him with all faithfulness. Throw away the gods of your ancestors. The gods your ancestors worshipped beyond the Euphrates River and in the Egypt and serve the Lord. But if serving the Lord seems undesirable to you, then choose for yourselves this day whom you will serve, whether the gods of your ancestors whom they served beyond the Euphrates or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you are living now. But as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. But as for me and my household... We will serve the Lord. Jo uh, Joshua makes a very uh, powerful statement here, a very clear statement about just who it is that he and his family are going to worship. And it is going to be this God, Yahweh, who brought the people up out of Egypt, took them across the Jordan River, into the land of Canaan, destroyed Can Jericho, so on and so forth. You see why Joshua uh, built up what he had to say there in 24 and 15 by reiterating all that God had done for his people. Interestingly enough, this applies directly to what J. Payleitner is talking about in the book this week. As uh, we look at page 25, uh, that's the second page of chapter 4, it says, Agar's warning in verse 6. Now, verse 6 uh, talks uh, here, um, Agar says, Do not add to his words, or he will rebuke you and prove you a liar. So, Agar's warning in verse 6, that anyone adding to God's words will be rebuked, foreshadows one of the last verses of the Bible, Revelation 22 and 18, which promises, if anyone adds anything to what is written here, God will add to that person the plagues described in this book. Then, Payleitner says this, all that to say, God's word can, does, and should stand on its own. It's quite common for Bible scholars to insist the Bible proves the Bible true. Now, you might think that statement, a statement like that would open the door for all kinds of scoffing. Skeptics might say, that's like a judge presiding, his own, presiding over his own trial, or that's the same as when a dictator gets elected by allowing only uh, one name on the ballot. It might even seem like a fair question to ask, how can the Bible prove the Bible? At the very end of what Paylander writes, he says, In his own way, Agar was saying, God is eager and able to give you refuge from all the crud of this world and the next. If you go your own way, make up your own religion, you will suffer the consequences, but that's your choice. So we have this issue sitting before us today um, that Agar presents to us, that Paylander presents to us, uh, which 
encourages us to consider the idea of God's word, its value, its worth, its truth, its ultimate authority in our lives. Is God's word true? That's the first question we have to ask ourselves. Is God's word true? And if we agree that God's word is true, then we have to say, what shall be my response to the truth of God's word? Well, my response to the truth of God's word ought to be applying it rightly to my life. Okay, if I'm going to apply God's word rightly to my life, then that means I have to make a choice. I've got to choose a whole lot of things. Who I will serve, how I will serve, how I will speak, how I will think, how I will act. And this is why Agur says, you know, don't add anything to what God has already said to you. That's a silly choice to make. He's already given you all of the direction, all of the insight, all of the knowledge, all of the hope and promise that you could ever possibly need. So why add to it? And then by the time we get to the book of Revelation, of course, it makes even more sense. Jesus comes, he clarifies God's word for us. He fulfills the law of God for us. He shows us forward what will happen when he comes yet again for us. So there's nothing to add. We know everything we need to know. God's word is fully sufficient for us. And so Agur says, don't add anything to this. Don't add to what God has said. Now we do that pretty often though. I think we, we try to bring our own situations into the truth of God's word. So the way this works sometimes is something that we call isogesis. Isogesis, not Jesus, J-E-S-U-S, but Jesus. G-E-S-I-S. Isogesis. It means taking where I am right now, my thoughts, my actions, my preferences, my predetermined notions, and applying them to Scripture so that Scripture reads the way that I want it to read. The opposite of that is exogesis, out of the Word. I come to the Word to pull from it, to receive from it, what it would have for me and apply that to my life. Two very different perspectives. So Pay Lightner says we have a choice to make. You can choose to go your own way, do your own thing, try to make God's word fit into your life, or you can go God's way and fit your life into God's life. And uh, the blessing, of course, comes when we will follow him, trust him uh, 100% in his leading. So Joshua says in 24 and 15, Choose you this day whom you will serve. But as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. Because we know that's where blessing is. Because we know that's where all of uh, his love for us is. Because we know that that's where our Savior is. So there's nothing to be added today. God's word is full, final, and sufficient for us. And it is single-handedly the thing getting us through day by day. So I hope you'll spend extra time in God's Word, especially this Holy Week, and I hope you have a very blessed uh, time of celebrating Easter this Sunday. And until we meet again next week for Chapter 5, I hope you have a great week. Talk to you soon.